Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my weekly update. It's been a, a week of, of many meetings in Westminster and of course it's also the season of AGMs. So it has been brilliant to be in front of so many of you. A great shame for me and I know Stuart and Tom feel the same that we've been virtual and in most cases um, you've been at, at live events. It's just sadly been the only way of, of doing it. I feel that sort of three quarters of my life is is live and the other quarter is virtual and what is virtual is sort of back to back. Today is I think six hours of virtual meetings which um, uh, test the eyesight is probably all I can say on, on that one. But uh, I had a very good meeting with Victoria Prentice. I speak to her very regularly. So I spoke to her on Monday of this week and she was very keen to know our thoughts on George Hughes' speech last week. I said, look, you know, really good news on talking about food security, self-sufficiency. We really do need that number nailed down as part of the food security reporting. And surely uh, we need to be growing in the areas that we're good at. So I, I do think we are making progress uh, on this subject of you know food production underpinning our businesses and the government that wants to be ambitious to make sure that we are continuing to produce food here and to my line always to remain the number one supplier of choice to this most prized food market in the world. Um, she was also very keen to know the situation up north with the weather events and she has visited herself and I think was absolutely staggered at what she saw um, it's been a really slow process getting things back to normal. I know that our northeast office have been really working around the clock to make sure that they are engaging with everyone. So that's very much on her radar and very keen to know as, as things uh, move forward what the situation is. She's also committed on the back of the scheme announcements that she will speak to our Uplands Forum, obviously chaired by Thomas Binns. Um, she totally recognises that there is no detail in that scheme and that they've got to get it right. I, I reinforce the point for us. It's about every farmer everywhere. It's about an economically viable scheme. Um, if farmers don't have the detail, if they cannot see the value for money in it, they simply won't base their businesses on it. So she's committed to meet with the forum and she's going to bring Janet Hughes with her. So that that is really positive news. And yesterday I was also able to have my first meeting with Jim McMahon, who is, of course, the new uh, Shadow DEFRA secretary. Um, Jim is, you know, an urban MP and, and the first to say that, you know, he does not have a rural background. That, in many ways, is, is no bad thing. We're starting with a completely blank canvas. Jim assured me that he'd ordered his Wellingtons and uh, when could I book a farm meeting in for him? And he wanted to come out and meet as many farmers as possible and really get onto farm and get to know the subject. I've no doubt on the many conversations I've had with the opposition uh, side, you know, that they really do want to engage with the royal agenda. I think it's it's well known to them that they will never win an election unless they do um, engage with the royal agenda, understand food and farming and have policies that are relevant. So I very much look forward to, to working with Jim. Incredibly important for the NFU that we have good relationships across all political parties. It's also the season of our live events, and I know many of you will have joined uh, the live event on Wednesday to hear the update on, on the scheme as we see it. And we'll be planning to have many more of these um, in the weeks and months ahead, and I'd really urge you to, to stay in touch with them. Uh, the AGMs that I've done, this has been a, a sort of constant theme. Um, people have really enjoyed being able to from the comfort of their own homes, being able to find out what is going on. I'm really conscious that it's it's a lot of complexity at the moment. And so I think these live events very much help uh, without people having to travel um, to understand what's happening, what to expect and forward planning. is always different, difficult in our sector and uh, never more so than right now. So as we head into next week with more restrictions, I look forward to our event on Tuesday, which will be in the QE2 Centre in Westminster, where we've got a, a large panel representing all sectors from the NPA to the BRC. We'll have Asha Maradi from Ali UK, we'll have Bob Carnell from ABP and others. Um, 
we've got many members of our council coming. I'm very clear for people who don't feel that it's safe for them to travel, they shouldn't come. We're totally compliant with government guidance. The QE2 Centre is um, saying that this can go ahead. Everybody has to comply, wear masks. Um, it's so needed. I mean, very much focusing on the here and now, the challenges of, of massively escalating input costs, the challenges of shortage to labour, but also forward looking as we've left the European Union, the settled state as it were, heading out as an independent trading nation. It's really right that we actually, as the largest manufacturing sector, come together with some clear plans and clear challenges to government as to what we see the future looking like. I know, for instance, Bob Carnell from ABP, really keen to push back at this uh, anti-meat, anti-dairy agenda, and he will be talking very publicly about all the work that they are doing on sustainability. And every area of work that I am involved in, you know, I, I think the science is, is really now starting to drill down on this anti-meat, anti-dairy campaign. It was a great pleasure for me also this week to meet Dave Potts, Chief Executive of Morrison's, and of course, Morrison's, when I talked to Dave about it, very clear that they will not be uh, telling their consumers how to shop. They will not be looking to cut uh, sales of meat and dairy. They will leave that to consumer choice and, and rightly so. And I absolutely applaud uh, their agenda on, on doing that. But I know as we go into next week, we face a rushing up of restrictions. And I'm sure many of you are extremely concerned about the situation with, with COVID in the run up to Christmas. So as ever, I just urge everybody to stay safe, do look after yourselves, and I look forward to speaking to you next week and I'll update you on how uh, this Taking Food Security Seriously Summit goes. Take care and many thanks.